Welcome to the Drum Chats Podcast, where we're talking anything and everything to do with drums. Today's topic, cymbals. Here are your hosts, Travis Davis and Dave Douglas. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Drum Chats Podcast. This is Travis and Dave, and this episode we are continuing on cymbals, part two moving on to some more topics that we didn't get to get to last time in the episode. And we've got some, uh, some questions that some of you had reached out to us and some specific things that y'all wanted us to talk about. But before that, Dave, how you doing, man? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. We're revisiting this, uh, this topic. I guess we're not really revisiting. We're continuing, but yeah. Yeah. That, that last time we just couldn't quite get through everything. (laughs) Um, so yeah, so so I guess we can we can pick this thing up and and try and wrap up our super super generalized kind of overview of symbols and I'm sure at some point we'll circle back around and dive in even deeper on a lot of these things but um but for the moment I guess um you had a hard time getting through hi hats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> should we should we pick up with hi hats? Man, I I think hi hats is a great place to start. It's like kind of um, it's almost like a thing unto its own. So maybe at some point we can do we can do one just on on hi hats because there's, I mean there's an absurd amount of variation and variables with hi hats. But um, uh, yeah. just just in general, um, I guess we quickly we did cover kind of like the thickness of hi hats and like the chick sound, you know, the mm-hmm. stick attack and whatnot. Um, but we didn't really talk much about that open sloshy hat sound too. And that can vary tremendously, obviously from your uh, choice of, of symbols. And again, like, like with most symbols and a lot of that has to do with the thickness of the symbol. I think yeah. that's for me, I think that's like the, probably the number one variation as far as the sound goes, like how thick the symbols are. Cause even if you have like, um, like uh, different finishes and um, even different sizes, <clears throat> even if you have like a 13 inch or 14 inch, 16 inch, whatever, really, t- I think the biggest variable is the thickness of that symbol. If you've got definitely. really heavy hi hats, it's a, it's definitely like you get that really distinct uh, stick attack sound. And, and when you open them, you know, they, they don't really wash out that much. They, it, it sounds like two symbols kind of just, clanking next to each other all the time right right Right. um and if you get those nice thin ones you know you might you might break those things a little more often uh which is never good because instead of replacing one symbol well i suppose it's usually the top one that goes isn't it the bottom ones you you know it's it's usually thinner so i've i have a lot of extra bottom hats Mm -hmm. (laughs) because i oh because i i haven't i haven't broken any hats for a long time actually but i used to go through top high hats a, kind of a lot actually. really yeah and it was always just the top one and um so i always replace that one but yeah throughout the years i ended up with m- many different bottoms uh bottom hi-hats mm-hmm. and i have much far, far fewer top hats available Hello. <laughs> yeah well it's funny you mentioned that because i've only gone through one top hi-hat before and like actually uh-huh. just destroying it yeah. um like recently I went from, and I still have them, but I went from 14 inch new beat hats to 16 inch K light hats, but that was mm-hmm. just a preference change. It, like I didn't damage it or anything, but you and I mentioned, um, I think in the last episode we talked about quick beats really quickly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I recorded a drummer when I was in audio school and he had the bottom hat of the quick beats, like with a one and a half inch crack in it. And I was like, how did you Oh man! How, how did I mean cracking the bottom hat? Still, I'm sure you can do that, but how did you do it that badly? You know, that's actually yeah. I, I don't really know. My experience has I don't think I've ever broken a bottom one. Yeah, me neither. You know, it's not it's not the one you're hitting, right? And they're always thicker. The bottom right. ones are like definitely heavier. heavier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even with the thinner, even with the thinner hats, like the bottom one's still gonna be heavier. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's kind of crazy. It seems like, um, that's one of those things where someone dropped it and it broke. Had to have. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, I know for me, like I play my hats really high Uh and 
there's a natural whenever they're whenever the hats are closed, the bottom hat tends to stick out. Um, oh yeah, like like yep. like a bottom mm-hmm. lip, you know. And yeah. I can see how that would affect the the chance of cracking the bottom more. But even still, that makes sense. like. I mean, when when I looked at this thing, it looked like he dropped it off of a cliff. I was like, how did you damage it that bad, you know? And especially, like you said, the bottom hat is a significantly different gauge. Um, yeah. But, you know, interesting enough, too, uh, like talking about the different thicknesses, even in the top hat. Um, yeah. We actually had a shout-out uh, on our YouTube channel from a guy named Chomps182. Chomps? And Chomps182, right. not Blink182. Cool. Chomps 182. And he said, uh, I feel like you need to chat about hi hats a little bit more. Here we are, Chomps. Oh, the cool. way you the way you like it to feel when playing them open versus closed, and how much air release there is in parentheses for lack of a better explanation. It's weird. I had this feeling in my head that I want to feel when playing my hi hats open, and it has to do with the tone, how much air they trap, and their physical weight. Mm-hmm. Anyway, it's hard to explain. Try swapping out your bottom hat. Yeah, he actually. I'm actually looking at that right now. I actually have a note with with this uh, his comment on it. Oh, and, cool. And he then he he mentioned something about master sounds, which is a mm-hmm. Zildjian um, uh, model. Yeah. And it's the it's that bottom hat that's like all wavy all the way around, right? Right. And I actually have I actually have those. Nice. Um, and I played those for a long time. And I, I really, really like those a lot. I thought that just that innovation, uh, and cause he talks about the, um, the air getting trapped in there. You ever have that where like you get that like weird sucking sound. It's mm-hmm. like when they're like too flat mm-hmm. and they're like lining up so perfectly, it does like a weird thing where they don't want to close, you right. know, right. with the air resistance. Um, yeah. so yeah, the sound or the master sound thing is super cool. And I actually have a pair of quick beats as well. And those have those holes drilled there's like four big holes in the bottom. So yeah. air obviously all escapes through that. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing uh, is that I use uh, Iron Cobra hi-hats. Oh, stands. cool. Cool. And, and well, I suppose it doesn't even matter what that all of them have like the, some sort of a screw. Um, uh, so you can actually adjust the adjust angle. The of the, yeah. Of, yeah. Of the bottom hat, just so it doesn't sit totally flat. So you avoid that kind of weird sucking thing that happens. Right. But yeah, that's that's uh, super important to get that going because when if if you get that weird air thing going in there, it's like super weird. Even if it's not that noticeable as far as the sound goes, it just like psychologically it just does something weird and <laughs> yeah, know, I don't know. Just like it gets in your head uh, and you're like, "What's wrong with my hi-hats?" Right. They're acting super weird. Yeah, no, it's well, even talking about the holes on the bottom of the quick beat, I think that's yeah. the only one well, not the only one, but that's like the first time that I'd ever seen a hi hat with holes in it. Cause like Zildjian had uh-huh. the, has the EFX line. Yeah. Where they've got like holes and even like ovals cut out. But it, even more interesting about the quick beat is the lack of the bell. It's just completely flat. Oh, yeah. On the bottom, on the bottom hi hat, there's no bell at all. Right. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. Do you have any idea? I don't. And I'm really. Okay. I, like I would be really interested to find out. So if any of you are listening, play Quick Beats, and you know why there is no bell, please, please send us that info. Um, we would love to know. I I would love to do a a uh, like a comparison between like 14 inch new beats with a bell and the Quick Beats without a bell. And I mean, yeah, I mean, even with the holes, that's an that's an added variation that the new beats don't have. But I do wonder there was some kind of engineering behind that, like, like knowledge and know how, why the bell needed yeah, to be gone. Sure. You know? Yeah. I don't know what, I don't know what that is. The, I mean, there is, um, the bell has a, it does have an effect on the sound. Actually, mm-hmm. the larger the bell on any symbol, um, the higher actually that the sound of the symbol is a uh, pitch actually does go up oh, and okay. it actually increases the sustain of the symbol the larger the bell is so like really? I, I'm a, yeah isn't that interesting um like you so like i'm a fan of like you know like oh we've as we've talked before like a little bit shorter ringing symbols a little bit quieter symbols um yeah 
And those things are actually helped by a smaller bell. Um, and actually the other thing that helps that is, is also the profile of the symbol, you know, like a flatter symbol that doesn't taper, doesn't curve as mm -hmm. much, um, down away from the bell. Right. Um, the flatter the symbol, like the shorter the sustain is too. And actually that helps the pitch that actually causes the pitch of the symbol to be lower as well. So it's really interesting. And I've, I noticed mm -hmm. that on symbols that I liked versus ones I didn't like. <clears throat> and then at one point I kind of like looked into it a little bit more and, and read that in a few sources. And actually, um, pretty much every manufacturer has some sort of like symbol anatomy or symbol 101 on their site. Right. Yeah. And a lot of those talk about it. Um, and just a little bit ago, I was looking, I was looking at, uh, I think it was maybe on Sabian's site. I was looking at it and they had a pretty good explanation, like super basic, uh, straightforward kind of explanation, you know? Okay. Uh, actually, Peisty has, Actually, yeah, I'm just looking at this. Peisty has uh, very simple explanations, but like pretty extensive, like the uh, the number of explanations. They have on edge, the taper, the curvature, or bow, the symbol, the bell. They kind of go through the whole anatomy of the symbol and, and nice. just give a couple sentences on, on what it does. So so definitely check out uh, Peisty's site and um, look at their symbol anatomy section, and that'll give you a lot of information on on, on some of that stuff. Um, so yeah, cool. so, uh, kind of jumping all over <laughs> again. No, but no, but getting, still getting really good at that. No, no, you're good. I mean, again, I think we could talk a while on even just different kind of bells. I honestly had no, I would have thought that the larger the bell, that's not, that, that's surprising to me. Like I would have thought that the larger the bell uh -huh. would have created less space for the, the waves whenever you hit your cymbal. To travel yeah, I around, think, or I think what it is um, is is that the the bell itself, you know, it's like a it's it's more of a pure tone, like a note almost, because right. it's like it's that you know it's the bell. Like you, you, we've all seen those. Um, you can buy just the bell, like the ice bell or whatever, you know, yeah, in the store. Yeah. It's like in the symbol section. It's like Zill the effects. Bell, it's like yeah. yeah, it's like whatever. It's it's with right. the percussion stuff and it's near the symbols, right? Mm. But that's like a very specific tone, you know? Right. And so it vibrates very quickly. Like the waveforms are very quick. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that causes a cymbal to, first of all, the pitch to be low are large waves, right? Like slow moving waves right. cause the pitch to be low, but also the surface area. So the larger the cymbal you end up with a lower pitch, but that also comes into play with how much bell, how much of the symbol is taken up by the size of the bell. Mm -hmm. So if you decrease the size of the bell, you actually increase the area of the symbol that has the large, slow moving waves. Right, right. So it actually will cause the pitch to be lower and, uh, and it will, and it actually does, uh, shorten the sustain. And I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure the physics behind that exactly, but I know it to be true. <laughs> That's, That's all I can say man, about that. Dave Douglas equals drums plus science. That's I awesome. don't know. I don't know. It kind of fell apart in the middle there, but you know. Well, that well that makes sense. We had some people cringe whenever we mentioned the ping ride. Oh yeah, like which was yeah. hilarious because I think we cringed whenever we thought about it. But no, <laughs> one of the other ones which is making the point and we're going to get back to hi-hats but i love this bell talk because i am biased to zildjian but zildjian has the mega bell ride oh where man it is like a nine inch bell and <laughs> whenever whenever you were describing that it does make sense to me because I, I think that bell is so like you look at those zil bells and they're they're pretty thick yeah um, you know and so for a symbol to have that bell at that thickness and have the ring around it where it's still a symbol. I can see how yeah. that density would would still make it quick, but at the same time resonate forever too. Forever. Like it just yeah. goes. It just goes. It's like um, I don't know. It's just like the vibrations it causes are like too uniform. There, huh. I don't know. There's like less surface area that has the variations in it you know it's like so much of a pure tone coming from that bell it's just like clang you know so it's like the worst thing in the world mm -hmm. a large bell 
on a thick symbol with a large, like a, a big profile, like it curves a lot. So it, then yeah. you just end up with like a really loud, cutting, uh, high pitched symbol that just doesn't end. You hit it once and it goes for like a minute and a half. Well, I think the you, worst. I think you just answered the question <laughs> as to why the quick beat doesn't have a bell. I mean, and I think you answered it earlier, but that makes sense. Like if if the if having a bell creates resonance. And having no mm-hmm. bell creates no resonance. Then the quick beat and the and the quick beat having no bell plus the holes makes total sense as to why they want no oh, resonance, I suppose that, no ring. Oh, that makes it quick. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> I guess that's really interesting. Get it from. Whoa. Okay, that is interesting. And I actually have a pair of quick beats I mentioned, mm-hmm. um, and it is a little bit of a tinny symbol. It doesn't have a lot of depth to the sound. Okay, but they are quick. For cool. sure, you know, um, so they're they're cool for like um, faster playing and some like you know intricate hi hat work. Mm-hmm. You know they they don't they don't wash out very very much. Um, okay. So you can you can definitely do like quick hi hat work on them, um, and that was the reason I got them because I wanted to to kind of mess around with some some faster stuff. Uh, yeah. On the hi hat, you know. Uh, I don't use them a ton, but they're cool. I use them every once in a while, and uh, and they're they're cool. Are they're they cool. brilliant finish or are they dull finish? Because I know Zildjian stopped doing the brilliant finish of those those a no, while back. I think they're I think they're just a traditional finish. It's a traditional finish. Okay. Yeah. I, I know that's more common now. I know for a while they had a brilliant finish, like the A custom finish. Oh but no, it, they're they're not that. No. Not that. Okay. No. Okay. Well, talking about holes and hi hats and holes and symbols. Period. Um, mm-hmm come like Zildjian's doing it. I think Sabian is doing it as well. And I know Meinl has done it, but have you seen where like the K dry series? Um, I think it's K dry, the Zildjian's newest series of dry symbols. Okay. okay. The, the, the hi-hats with like a ridiculous amount of holes in them. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. I've, I have seen some things that Meinl has put out, um, that have a crazy amount of holes in them and they tend to usually get kind of, um, categorized under the like effect symbols Mm -hmm. uh or signature series like someone's signature series um and they're really cool and there's actually a minor some crashes that i really would like to buy i think it's like their trash crash i think they call them okay um that have a lot of holes in them and and then sabian has some the ozone series Uh that are that are pretty interesting and uh i'd like to check those guys out too but no i'm not familiar with the uh with the zildjian ones well, I was actually wrong. It wasn't the like Zildjian does have. It's the special K custom special dry symbols, oh, okay. but okay. the only ones that have the holes in it is it's a it's a special dry trash crash. And there's like there's gotta oh, okay. be like, there's gotta be like forty holes in that thing. <laughs> like lo, like legitimately, I'm looking at it right now. It's insane. Um, That's awesome. But no, like I would be interested. There's a guy, I think you and I had talked about him and anybody listening, you should go check this guy out. He goes by R David R on YouTube. And he, he's one of those guys who's like, he's a big DIY guy. Mm -hmm. And so he takes a pair of like old Sabians and he's like, I'm going to make these into something really cool. And he takes them to a drill press and just drills like 20 holes in them. Oh man. And he does a before and after audio clip of them being played oh cool and, and like it's really neat what happens whenever you drill one hole into a symbol it may be a very very minor difference but the more holes you put in it it's really cool what it does to the sound like which makes has sense he, for has he really messed some up i mean <laughs> or, or are they always like kind of, are they always kind of cool I think they're pretty cool, and okay, okay. I mean, I, I think he's a he's kind of a spokesperson for one of the symbol companies we mentioned last time, Saluda, which is kind of oh, a okay. unknown company. But he, he's kind of worked with them, and so they'll send him some symbols, some symbols that I think he's done some work on, maybe. But he'll take some old symbols and just kind of rejuvenate them and make them really cool. And That's I was watching awesome. it, I was like, man, that would be actually really neat to try. And um, well, you talked about that one you had broken. You can just drill some holes in that guy. I know. I actually started the repair process on it, so hopefully oh, did you, I could. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. The, well, if it fails, if it fails, I'm going to take my <laughs> K light ride and make it into a K light dry ride. <laughs> uh, but uh, it could be cool. You never know. It could be well, cool. Well, while we're on with hi hats, 
I think it's neat what some people do, even when they get into like world percussion or yeah. even some Latin where I remember flipping through a Guitar Center catalog and they had, I forget what the kit was that they had in the picture, but they had taken two like 12 inch Chinas and put them on a hi-hat stand. Like What? Yeah. Using Chinas as hi-hats. No, ha- that had to be bad. I I, it, I mean, all I saw was a picture, but I was like, I, I can't imagine this. There can't be any stick definition whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, I feel like two Chinas on a hi-hat stand as as hi-hats, I feel yeah. like that is only good for pictures. It's not, it's not good for playing. <laughs> it's I all mean, image. It's, there's no sound. <laughs> well, it's an interesting image, right? Everyone's right. going to be like, whoa, that's crazy. Yeah. But I mean, that's going to sound horrible. Have you ever used a china? I the only time that I've ever played on a china was maybe on a demo kit at Guitar Center. That was oh, about nice! It. I've never I've owned. I've never owned one. I've owned uh, maybe just one. I don't. I've owned. I think I maybe owned more than one, but um, I actually had one that I just sold. Maybe I don't know. Maybe like two years ago or something. Cool. And I had it, I've had it forever. And I would just at one day, I was just like, I haven't hit this with a stick in like a decade. So, you know, I was like, <laughs> I'm going to just go ahead and sell this thing. Um, but I suppose as, as far as China's go, I think that was a cool one. It was a 16 inch um, Zildjian Oriental. Mm-hmm. Uh, there may be some other modifier or name or something attached to that. But that was a cool one. Cool. And uh, And I always had a good feeling about 14 inch chinas i'm not exactly sure why i think just i think i think some of the bigger ones i feel like they they get in the way it's just like almost getting to be like a gong yeah so the 14 inch really the, dark the, yeah so the 14 inch uh i i know some people who have used those before and i always thought those were kind of cool but i just never found a lot of use for one certainly not with you know most of the stuff that i've played yeah, but it'd be. I think it'd be kind of cool to have one around, but I just still don't know how much I would use it. Like I said, I had that one and I hadn't hit it in forever, so I sold it. So I suppose the thing to do would be to have not sold that. Yeah, <laughs> kind of wish you had it now. <laughs> no, I don't really. That's no. I'm fine. I'm fine with having sold it. Um, there are a lot of other symbols that I would like to try out before getting back into China's, you know, so yeah, including well, splashes. Like I don't own any splashes, but yeah, I mean, I'm either. kind of like kind of getting excited about them right now. Yeah. I'm not sure why. Yeah. Just like a little guy, like a little eight inch or something. I was about to ask, would you want to go like with really small or would you want to go with yeah. like smaller crash kind of splash? I don't think I would ever want to, I mean, I don't want certainly not like a 14. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if 14 is considered a splash anymore, really. It's, you know, 12, I, I guess, Maybe. was kind of a big splash, right? Yeah, that's a pretty big one. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, I feel like 8 or 10 is maybe the way to go. Okay. I mean, I'm yeah. not an expert on splashes, so I, I don't I don't really know. But if I were to put, to get one, like, today, uh-huh. I'd think I'd, I'd get an either an 8 or a 10. I think, I think that that is... That's what I grew up... Like, the first church that I played for that's what all the splash kit had symbols. was it's yeah. just all splashes <laughs> well no but like they no, had okay. they they had two on there to where it was it was nice. two it was too too many <laughs> yeah uh, to, to me at least but no they they were right. it, it was an eight inch and a ten inch um i was okay. given when i first started playing i was given a six inch sabine Whoa. splash and like oh wow there is nothing to that symbol <laughs> like yeah it's so small that's uh, tiny and there's like, and and it was a Sabian B8, so it was a stamped symbol already. Yeah, so, so it's it, just like, bing. It might as well have been like a cup chime. Like, yeah, yeah, it wasn't even splashy. It was more pingy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but while well, we're one on, of these days, you know, I'm gonna have to dive back into to splashes. You know, I mean, I didn't know how to use splashes when I had access to one. Like when I first started playing, my dad had one. Yeah, and um, and so I would I would use that, but um. You know, I didn't know how to properly use a splash symbol really, so I just kind of use it like a crash, and it's just it's just a little crash. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, it's there's no power to it, right? Right. I I mean, it's not what it's designed for, but you know, I was like learning how to play, and you know, I would just hit it on one with the kick. Oh, 
<laughs> that you was know. your crash. <laughs> that was, I was playing it like a crash. Yeah, I didn't gotcha. know. Gotcha. Yeah. So well, I would no. play it differently now. Well, I mean, I've seen some guys put splashes on hi hats too. Whenever they get into like Latin percussion and oh yeah, um, or even like acoustic breakdowns, but they're usually usually on like um, what are those like suspended hi hat stands where it's mm-hmm. not like on the floor. But I was mm-hmm. thinking, but I was thinking about a second ago. Um, how do you feel about like? Have you ever seen guys use like two hi hats? Like where they'll have their main hi hat on their left and they'll have a suspended hi hat on their right or something? Yeah, yeah. Um, there, you know, like sometimes it'll be one that doesn't have any sort of foot control. It's just like a permanently like it's just sloshy there. hat. Yeah. And um, or yeah, some people use some sort of a remote hi hat for remote hi-hat. A, there you a go. different, you know, a different size uh, set of hats or something like that. Something that sounds way different. And I feel like if people are doing like a a, a prog thing mm-hmm. and like they're really good i mean it can be really awesome super cool it's i mean it's not the kind of stuff that i play but like i'm all about some like serious musicianship you know i think it can be really cool just like as a musician to like really get into some of that stuff like as a musician it's like most of that stuff like um like i'm a fan of of a lot of like dream theater like i like oh yeah but it's like totally I don't even know if you could ever call their songs good songs, but they're just like, they're like songs for musicians, you know? Right. Oh yeah. So technical. You know, yeah, you don't, I don't know. I mean, you can really enjoy it. And some people just absolutely love that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm more of a song person. Right. And, uh, it, generally that means like a little bit more simplistic, right? Yeah. Just like keep, keep your ideas like a little bit more focused. Um, most progressive music, I feel like there's like four songs there and they've just squished them all into one Mm -hmm. and made like a really cool composition. Um, but it's not one idea. Yeah. Right. Um, but anyway, my, so my, my whole point is that in certain contexts, I think it can be super cool to have all those different types of textures, you know? And I actually owned a remote hi-hat stand for a long time because I had this idea that I wanted to make a completely, not completely, um, I wanted to make a symmetrical drum set and I wanted to put the hi-hat and directly in line with the snare directly in front of me. So the like snare and then directly in front of the snare would be the hi-hat. So it's like right in the in middle. Front of you. Okay. Yeah, like right in the middle, you know? <laughs> and then I would put I'd put a tom on either side of it and then I'd have a a ride on each side going out and then floor toms on each side. And I wanted to have everything exactly the same across. You know, it'd be different size toms and stuff. Yeah. But I wanted it to be like matching, you know, rides and crashes and stuff like that. They could be different sizes, but like it would have everything like symmetric as far as where it's it's placed. Yeah. And I never put it together, but I did buy the remote hi hat stand uh, in preparation for it. it. Yeah. I was all prepped for it. And then I never, I never did it. So that was another thing that I had for like almost a decade. And I was like, what am I doing with this remote hi hat? I'm not doing anything with it. So. I sold that too, but I've got to say, man, um, have you seen Matt McGuire? He's a big drum cover guy on YouTube. No, I don't think so. I need to send you some links of this guy because he, to- in my brain, totally revolutionized the use of a remote hi hat. Because oh, what I think is really neat about remote hi hats is like you said it earlier is using a different size hi hat. Um, yeah. Whether you're controlling it with your foot and opening and closing, or you have it permanently closed or permanently open. But yeah, what he's yeah, doing. One. Yeah, like he, a lot of his covers, he got picked up by the chain smokers. And so, like, he started oh, touring with okay. them because a lot of his covers were like of like EDM songs or dubstep. And he would put drums to them, which we all know virtual drums are easy uh-huh. to play to. But, yeah, <laughs> joking. Um, <laughs> but he, but like, just tearing apart these EDM songs. Well, his, his, um, dexterity between both of his hands is incredible because he'll have like a he plays soul tone cymbals which i I actually think are real they sound really cool but he plays 14 inch hats on his left and then on his suspended uh on his suspended hats he's got 13 inch but he'll alternate like even at the same time playing both hi hats and just crossing over 14 13 14 13 and maybe in the chorus or the bridge he'll swap over to the 13 and do 16 inch or whatever and he'll do like 30 second notes with one hand on his oh, yeah. suspended and then go back and so i think it is really neat um 
like I would love to own a pair of 13 inch Zildjian pocket hats and they're like brilliant oh, cool. finished, but really heavily hammered. Yeah. Um, Eric Moore, uh, the first time I'd ever seen him was him playing them. Um, and for me, I was thinking about getting a suspended, uh, hi hat or remote hi hat and uh-huh. getting a pair of 13 inch pocket hats to have that accessory hat on the right or something. Yeah, I mean, I think that'd be really cool. That's like a set of hats that you probably wouldn't typically use on their own with the music that you play, right? Probably not, no. Yeah, but it'd be super cool to have it as like a secondary set of hats. Well, even recording too, I think would be, because I love the idea of having a Rolodex of cymbals and having a pair of 13-inch pocket hats. Even if I just recorded with them, they sound so cool. Like as brilliant as they are and as tinny as that tends to sound whenever they're brilliant, they just because of their you're size. You're like not you're not a fan of brilliant symbols at all. That's not true. <laughs> I mean, I haven't I don't think I've heard you say a single good thing about a brilliant finish symbol. Which is really funny because two of mine are. Oh, okay. I really? well, no three of them. I have an eighteen inch projection crash, which is an a custom. Oh brilliant. yeah. We did talk about that because I own the same crash and in, don't like it. In fact Do you want, do you want to buy mine? Uh, sure. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Uh, no, in fact, uh, our friend Chomps182 even threw in at the very end of his comment, he said, I love my 18 inch projection crash, by the way. <laughs> oh, dude, yeah, I saw that. I saw, am I the only one who doesn't really like that symbol? I think you're I the guess I am. only one. Well, well, the first time I'd ever heard of it, one of I'm my the favorite, only one out of us three. Out of us three, yeah. Okay. You, right. stand, you stand alone, Dave. Sorry, man. <laughs> but no, the first time I, I'd ever heard about it was from my one of my favorite drummers, um, Adam Willard, when he played okay. for Angels and Airwaves. Okay. Um, he was breaking down his kit, and he mentioned a 20-inch projection crash. And I was like, well, if he's got it, I got to have it. And yeah. I have an yeah. 18-inch projection crash off to my left, like far left, and then my 20-inch projection crash like immediately to my two- left projection crashes on your kit yeah i have an 18 inch and i have a 20 inch uh, oh wow and okay. then my other crash is really a 21 inch sweet ride and it's a brilliant uh-huh. finish and so oh okay um but I, I like i've used that as my main ride being a brilliant mm-hmm. finish um i've used that as my main ride like when i've worked with like a dj or something like smaller what, the sweet ride the sweet ride yeah. yeah 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 but i use it as a crash because i just love the way it sounds and again Adam That's Willard cool. was the one that I got that idea from. So, yeah, I've owned, I've owned, uh, I don't even know, man, probably like four or five sweet rides. And I think they only come in 21, right? Not anymore. They come out, they, they, they oh, came, really? they came out with a 23 inch A oh. series. And then now there's a K, there's a K sweet ride. But originally, oh, okay. but originally it was only a 21 and then not very long. Yeah, like not very long ago they came out with a twenty-three inch. I, I see. Okay, yeah, I, I wasn't. I wasn't it. even aware of that. But yeah, I owned a bunch of twenty-one inch sweet rides, yeah. uh, and have you know broken them all. But I used them uh, a little bit. I would use them occasionally as my main ride, but I mm-hmm. typically uh, used a uh, twenty-two inch for my main ride. So gotcha. It wasn't that often that I would, but I would often have it as my crash on my right side next to my ride. Gotcha. So I have two rides over there. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, that's it's a that's a cool symbol. No, it's funny that that you said I I don't like brilliant finishes. I just feel like you've only had negative things to say about it. Which them. is so funny because now that you mentioned it, <laughs> all I have had to say was negative things. But I think the reason is is because I don't use a brilliant ride like mm-hmm. like as a normal ride, and I don't use yep. brilliant hats because. Okay. Because the stick definition on those, you're using you're you unless you're crashing on a ride, you're using more stick definition, and you're yeah. you're using the beat of it, or or even maybe the shoulder on your hat. But because they're typically so quick, even a ride can be very very quick in its de- its definition. But even hi hats, it can be really tinny. Um, yeah, you just feel like that that the stick attack just gets like too much like top end. Like you really yeah. hear that the ting. Yeah, you're 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 not really. Yeah. But when I'm crashing, I'm crashing, and like if I have like a ra- like a regular finish um, A series crash or even a K yeah. crash, it, mm-hmm. it it's a little bit more washy. But I love my crashes to be out front and project, hence yeah, the projection yeah. crash. So having right, a brilliant right. finish on the crash is one thing, but I'm not okay. a big fan of brilliant finish rides or hi hats. Okay, 
I used um, 22 inch A custom rides for a long time, which is brilliant, of course. Yeah, but yeah, that was like the main ride that I used for probably four, probably four years or something. That was a 22 inch. A 22 inch A custom ride, okay. yeah. And on a lot of the Reliant K, the earlier stuff is that ride, uh, on all the recordings as well. You know, Anatomy, yeah. Two Lefts, I think, mm-hmm, is also that ride. Okay. Um, yeah. So there's cool. a lot of there's a lot of brilliant ride on uh, <laughs> Reliant K, older Reliant K stuff. I want to go back and listen see if I can pick it out. But yeah, while, yeah. But, I, I think it stopped after after mm-hmm, but yeah. Okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of it though. Well, we're on a good roll, so why don't we take a little break here, and then we'll and we'll come back and continue our symbol conversation. Hey guys, this is Dave, and it's time for another story. This one takes place in the beautiful town of Atlanta, Georgia, at the beautiful venue of the Tabernacle, which I really like. The Tabernacle. Uh, Reliant Case played there a bunch of times, and it's always a lot of fun. The crowd's always great. It's a cool place to play a show, um, and I've never been to a show there, but it seems like it might be a cool place to see a show as well. Uh, maybe if, if someone out there is, is listening to this who was at this particular show or at any show really at the Tabernacle, you could chime in on that, uh, shoot us a message. But if you were at this show that I'm about to talk about, you should definitely hit us up. This is a show where we walk out on stage and nothing happens. Nothing happens. So let me go back. So I run a click. I play to a metronome and I run click off of a computer that's on my left side and I run Ableton and it has all of my clicks in it and I can super easy just like get from song to song. We can change the set order. We can, uh, whatever we need to do. And I can just like punch it on this little launch pad device I have and I can go right to whatever song I need to be at and the click starts, boom. And then there's a few songs that have some extra little noises in them. I don't think there's really any that have any instrumentation in them. Every once in a while, there'll be like an organ or something like that. That, uh, that we don't have live. And, and since we play to a click, we have the option to go ahead and have that play off of a computer. But the song that we were starting with at this show was a song from the record Air for Free. And uh, the song is Local Construction, and it has some construction noises in the second verse. And um, so that was on the computer. But of course, even without any of that, like that doesn't matter. Like who cares if the construction noises aren't there? What I care about is that I play to a click and I want to play to a click. Like that's how I practice. That's how I feel comfortable. Um, and the band, I feel like we can just be a lot tighter when I'm playing with a click. So, uh, so I need that click. And also, I mean, it's one thing if the click goes out in the middle of the song or something like you just roll with it, of course. But this is literally, we're walking out on stage. The intro music is climaxing and I look at the computer and it's dead. There's nothing. So it seemed like a real big issue. Um, it turns out that the power supply for the computer, just the, the, the power cable, had somehow been unplugged and the computer was just sitting there on for like, you know, for like four hours or something from sound check until then, probably even longer than that. And so of course the battery had just run dead. Um, and it was kind of the best possible situation. I just reached over. I, once I figured out what was going on with it, which, you know, it's probably took only like 10 seconds or something. I just grabbed that power cable, boop, popped it back in. And within probably about 20 seconds, the computer boop, sprang back to life. And, uh, and it worked just fine. I started the song. And we just had like a kind of a super weird like 30 second delay. But it was like 30 seconds of total panic, you know. Uh, but that's uh, one of the things that you run into if you uh, rely on a computer um, during your show. So that's it. Tabernacle in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, hit us up if you were at that show and tell us if it was super weird or tell me if it was super weird. Um, that's it. Back to the show, guys. Bye. Hey, guys, and we are back. Um, 
We have just a couple little things that we want to hit here still. We talked a little bit about some variations that are a little off the wall when it comes to symbols. We talked about like trashy symbols with like holes and stuff like that in them. And uh, I guess we talked about China's for a second too. Um, yeah. And actually I mentioned once before that I really just like kind of slightly trashy symbols anyway mm -hmm. to begin with. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't have uh, China anymore or anything like that, but some of my favorite symbols are what I would consider to be slightly trashy, just a little bit, you know, Which I, I mentioned, well, I mentioned I've got that dream symbol, the, um, yeah. vintage bliss. I couldn't remember the uh, model when, uh, last episode. Okay. And of course the second that we like were finished taping, I was like, Oh yeah. Vintage bliss. I don't know. I oh, okay. Im immediately remembered what it was, but it's 20 inch vintage bliss. And it's like just a little bit trashy. And cool. then also my favorite symbol of all time is the um, Minel Extra Thin Hammered uh, to 20 inch. Sweet. And it's just so beautiful. It just blends so perfectly. It's so expressive. And it also is just a little bit trashy. And I love it so much. Nice. So much. And I've broken all of them that I've owned. And I don't have one right now. And it's really a bummer. Oh man. I'm going to get one though. I'm going to get another one. Cool. But outside of trashy, little bit trashy symbols, there's all kinds of other things that are like super trashy, right? Like, like stacks are really hot right now and they've been for a yeah. little bit, but like we're hearing more and more about this and, and companies are coming out with like specific groups of symbols that are supposed, they're sold as a stack, right? Yeah. Like everyone's doing that now. Mm -hmm. It used to just be like you'd have some random symbols or you would just have some crazy uh, like splashes that were broken or whatever, right? And you just throw them on as like an effect thing. But yeah. now everyone's selling actual stacks of symbols, like multiple symbols that you're supposed to just have sitting on top of each other. Yeah. Um, have you? Do you have any experience with stacks? I don't. I have noticed that there is a growing trend in using stacks. I feel like maybe in the past year and a half, especially, I think it's been longer yeah. than that, but like recently, so many people are doing stacks. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen and I've tried, I've tried like smaller stuff, like putting a splash mm -hmm. on top of a bigger splash maybe. Like, and I don't yeah. own any, but like if I was around it, I've seen where people will take a china and put put a oh, splash yeah, put, like yeah. on like in it yep, um, yep yep and i've tried other stuff like putting a smaller crash on top of a crash or um but like i don't i don't keep any on my kit yeah and p i mean it's, you tend to use them a lot like you would a splash it's like an mm -hmm. accent thing it's right accent, you know yeah um, and I think they're super cool. I don't, I don't own any either, but there's some people that I really like their drumming and they use them and it's always, yeah. I, in my mind, I'm like, how would I use a stack? And then when I hear them use it, I'm just like, oh my gosh, that's super cool. Yeah. No, <laughs> so, you know, know. Uh, Luke Holland is a, mm -hmm. he has like a signature stack that, that he like came up with in his oh, videos okay. and stuff. And recently I just read that Minel, I think he posted on Instagram, Minel actually released his, oh. his his own signature stack that you can go buy from Minel. Oh, like, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. like cuz you had mentioned that, that that companies were selling stacks and I could think of a couple but that one especially I was like I, I would always see it in videos and I don't know much about Minel symbols which I would like to but mm -hmm. I'd always notice that he played the same exact stack setup and now you can actually go to Minel yeah. guitar center he's I think selling it buy. man. Cause he's selling it, dude, and it sounds cool. Like, well, like you said, you would think it's like I don't really think I would have a reason, or I don't know when I would be able to play this and what I'm playing. And then you see somebody play it, what whatever the context is, and you're like, yeah. oh, that's actually a really cool idea. Like in the same way you'd use a splash or even a china, just an accent. Yeah, sound, you know? and it's just like I guess it's um, I've seen a lot more just effect symbols in general. You yeah. know, just like interesting tonalities and textures and whatnot. And I, I, I think I have seen that more in the last couple of years. Uh -huh. It just seems to be like a growing area 
of of cymbals and percussion you know yeah uh so i think it just kind of fits in in with that you know all the trashy cymbals that we talked about with like huge holes in them like the ozones or the trash crashes or whatever you know right it's the same kind of thing it's just people experimenting with experimenting with all these sounds that are kind of available Mm -hmm. uh with random pieces of metal you know yeah well, I, I, um, I think yeah. the first time I'd ever heard that kind of sound was a Sabian chopper symbol. Have you ever seen that? No. What's a chopper? What it's, is that? It's like, um, I think it's like maybe 10 inches in diameter and it looks like a fan, like, like the symbol is cut oh. out like, well, like fan blades and there's like yeah. three pieces and it's just real like, like, yep. I know what you're talking about now. That was the first sound I'd ever heard of that sounded like stacks and then i was watching a video on like different stack combinations and how you should try this with this and it's just and like an infinite number of stacks that you can do um but yeah the effect sure. the effects world alone even like have you ever seen a zildjian spiral trash uh no what is no that? it's no. literally like if you took a crash and you started in the middle by the bell and took an like took a blade and just cut like in a spiral working your way out and then yeah. held it and it looks like a spring like it like it it's sits like down. an apple like an apple peel <laughs> <laughs> like when you get one that's all the whole apple on Dude, one exactly Is it like that yeah and Wait. it hangs from like a normal stand and it just drapes down so it's like four feet tall and people just and you go, play it yeah they'll like start their stick up at the top and just run it all the way down and come back what up. they play it like chimes kind of kind oh, of weird. but but instead of side to side they go up and down but it sounds it, it sounds really is, dark and weird, but it sounds really cool. It's useful? That's like a thing that's useful? I it, think it's to, specific to the genre man. of music that it's useful, but okay, some people make okay. use of it. I think Terry Abozio right. may have it along with oh, every other piece of equipment you can I imagine. Almost, I almost just mentioned him. <laughs> he just like... If you ever see like some Terry Abozio, if you ever see any of his like drum videos... Uh-huh. Um, man, I mean, I get it. The guy's talented. He's really good. But man, that annoys the heck out of me. It's too just, much, man. Well, he just does like a drum solo and he spends like four minutes just playing like chinas and gongs. And I'm just like, come on, mm-hmm. like play a beat or something. <laughs> oh my he's, goodness. He, he's and one he of those dream like, theater kind has, of guys. And he's <laughs> got like 30 toms. Just like, oh man. Each one's tuned to a certain note and... Oh, like 50, I just have no. 50 symbols. I, have, I have no patience for that. Like none, <laughs> none. I just can't do it. Uh, I, I again, I get it that he's talented, but man. But well, well, I feel like I don't think he fits into the world percussion, so to speak. But that kind oh, of Terry Bazio, if you're listening to this, go ahead and reach out to us. Yeah, please, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I would love to pick your brain on your kit. Um, but no, I feel like that kind of drummer is where a lot of those effect symbols come into play where you normally wouldn't. It's almost taboo to use them in like a punk setting or a oh, yeah. jazz There's no setting use for it or whatever, there. you know. But in those kind of settings where they're already playing weird beats yeah. or rhythms or whatever, those accents yeah. kind of come in. You're like, well, what was that? Right, you know? right. It may be like most widely used within drum clinics. I'm going to go ahead and say that. It's, it's mainly for clinics. So there you go. I don't know. I just, that's what I'm going to say right now. Like, here's this. This is really cool. All right. That's yeah. about the extent of yeah. the use of it. Yeah. You'll never use this in an actual song. Right. But like, someone might. I'm sure. Honestly, though, if someone out there is listening to this and has one of those or has used that in a like a constructive way, please, please head us up and like let us know your experience with it. Cause like, you know, everyone's style is different and everyone, the music people are playing is different. So certainly we have a certain, like a particular point of view. Um, but I would love to actually hear someone talk about it who has one or has used one or something like that, you know, or it can point us to a song where there's one in it. And I'm sure it's like, you know, I'm mm-hmm. sure it's pretty interesting within the context of a song if it's right. actually used with it. But yeah, man, I just, I just, uh, thinking about my own playing, I would find just no use for that whatsoever. Yeah. Know? Well, to combine kind of two of what we've been talking about, um, have you seen what DW and LP, their collaboration that they did this year? Mm, no. It's it's the DW 5000 series low boy hi-hat stand with cymbals. So LP, 
I think they're eight inch cymbals and it's a DW 5,000 hi-hat stand, but it's like a foot tall. <laughs> so it's only played with your, <laughs> it's only played with your foot. Like unless you wanted to reach down and play with your, oh, your sticks, but yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. but it's kind of blending the hi-hats, but it's definitely an, an effects thing where you're just okay. stepping and opening. It looks hilarious. Like <laughs> it looks like you've got to be like three feet tall to play this thing. That's fantastic. I love it. <laughs> yeah, but I watched a video and a guy was playing it and it's just super short. He was playing with with his foot and it sounded really cool. Like Is it just like next to his hi-hat stand or Yeah, yeah, you yeah, like you would have your normal hi-hat stand and then this would like they came out with a new Like do you, you have to play came it, out, like do you have to have one of those like drop clutches on your hi-hat stand so you can like close it or I'm just thinking like if you take your foot off of your hi hat and put it on there, then your hi hat's just going to be all open and sloshy. So you either got to be like on the ride or doing some other sort of interesting beat or something, right? That's so probably a little bit challenging to use. I that will, yeah, well, kind of like when people have like shakers on a pedal, or uh-huh. they'll have or they'll have like a tambourine attached to a beater, and they have it on their left or something. I, I think that that oh, might okay. be what this is. Or if you're yeah. doing like a like a stripped down set where you're playing a cajon and you need a hi hat. Um, hmm. where you, you can be controlling it's just the pedal. It's just the pedal hat, right? right. So it's just that open closed sound. Right. Cause you're, cause you're already doing the kick yeah. drum and the snare with your hands. You just have your okay. foot, your feet are just propping yourself anyway. Oh yeah. That I might be what that's used for. I bet that's really cool if you're playing a cajon. Yeah. I bet that's super cool. Yeah. Um, cause you know how some of the cajons, they have like the snare wires in them or, right. or, um, some people I have a, I have a good buddy who always, like bungee cords, uh, like a, a tambourine to his. Oh, cool. Um, so you get that, like, you know, you get that tambourine sound going with yeah. it and stuff. So yeah. that seems really cool to have like a hi hat type of, like the pedal hat type of sound going with it as well. And you can kind of like create a little more of a complex beat. That sounds really cool, actually. I think it would be. And especially like I've seen guys who will play a cajon or play a snare drum and sit on the cajon, but play the cajon with a beater. With with like a with like oh, a remote yeah. kick drum or something, yeah. Um, or you can um, still sit on it, but have the kick pedal like fa- backwards, so you're actually doing it with your heel. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. Well, man. we'll talk more about that in our episode on cajones. Yeah, whenever we get there, <laughs> that would be a pretty cool episode. And I think there was, we're yeah. There was one more thing that I wanted to quickly touch on. Yeah, and definitely. That was uh cleaning symbols i know this is like maybe outside of the scope of of the our super generic generalized symbol episode but at least we can get a little bit of a thought here on cleaning symbols um are you do you like shiny symbols do you clean yours do you try and keep them keep them nice and shiny i do your man I, you do? I, I like cleaning my symbols. I need to clean my symbols. I'm actually cleaning my buddy Jacob's symbols right now. He's got a whole set of A customs that you're desperately... cleaning his symbols. I'm cleaning them. Hey, Jacob, if you're listening, I'm putting you on blast right now. But, Why uh, are you doing that? He, I don't know. I offer it, I guess. Oh. Like, it's, well, I use it's this like stuff. a thing you like doing? I guess so. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I use this product called Groove Juice, and there's a lot. A lot oh, of different yeah. companies. I've used that before. You used it? Yeah. It's I've like, used that before. It's yeah. almost like instant bleach. Like you spray it on and it's activating immediately. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, be... I have not cleaned symbols in like, I don't know, like 10 or 15 years. I haven't cleaned yeah. any symbols. Yeah. I used to I used to occasionally clean them. Um, and, oh, okay. So I take it back. I have well i haven't really cleaned i've kind of just like wiped down some symbols before where if i would get like a lot of sweat on them or something because oh. it will actually like tarnish your symbols it will like you the acids mm-hmm. in your then the sweat coming out of your body will actually try to start to eat the symbol away you know yeah um if it sits there for too long and i actually had i actually had some symbols that um there was one or two symbols in particular that i definitely um had sweated on put them away and then like was using other symbols and Mm -hmm. like didn't have these symbols out for like a year okay and i pulled them out and there was like like crazy tarnish like they were super weird like but it was definitely where there was sweat there was like all these like green areas on them 
and it was really weird. I think you need to really change weird. your diet, man. <laughs> <laughs> they, they weren't. It wasn't green when it went in. It was like that's crazy. eating away at the symbol. That's crazy. You know? I didn't know that. But crazy things happen. Like if you're playing shows, like you know how it is when you like you play a show and then you're like tearing everything down and mm-hmm. stuff. You know, it just doesn't get cleaned, right? So yeah. if you like put it away and then you don't pull it out because you switch to something else and then right. it sits for a while, you know. That's just how it goes, like, you know. No, but, that... Yeah, that, so, I, so I, yeah. you know, try and clean sweat off of cymbals, guys. Like, if they get all soaked in your sweat, go ahead and just mm-hmm. give them a little wipe down, you know, with some warm water or whatever. But um, but yeah. I haven't actually, like, cleaned, cleaned cymbals in, like, so many years. Yeah. Whoa. Did you hear that? I did hear that, man. You got a rainstorm over there? <laughs> I saw the light flash, too. <laughs> <laughs> That was crazy. Um, yeah, yeah, no, there. Like I've read some, I've read some forums where people are like passionately against cleaning symbols. Like, and it changes you know, the sound. Yeah, I've it heard does. that. I've heard it that. It does. I, I would mean, like it, it. It brightens them up. It causes them to resonate more. Mm-hmm. Uh, I def. I feel like the you know the the dirt helps uh you know ground the symbols a little bit, brings them down to earth. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I recorded a guy who had a beer stain on his on his oh. crash. He was like, I was playing a show and this guy got wasted and he dumped oh. beer all over my drums. And I'm like, oh, okay, what? you should definitely clean your cymbals at that rate. <laughs> like, you that's disgusting. Absolutely man. should. Yeah, yeah. They like no, stained no, it significantly. Yeah. It was gross. Beer, soda, anything like. I mean, any th- sort of like really blatantly foreign substance you know yeah. especially something that's like acidic or whatever like yeah you gotta you gotta wipe that off yeah you know did he also stop playing in the middle of the song and punch the guy in the face i he may have asked if he could have like oh my I, goodness. I don't know i don't know i would have that's disgusting <laughs> like, i don't know yeah but yeah i don't i don't i don't clean my symbols no i don't know i, I yeah. mean i don't do it I don't, I don't really have a solid reason as to why I do other than I just like mm-hmm. them looking nice and shiny. A oh, quick little quick little thought though, if ahead. you're going to um be recording a music video, more often than not, if you clean your cymbals and make them insanely shiny, when you get to the video, they there's a good chance they're going to make you uh, put something on them to make them dirty because they can't have all that glare flying around off the cymbals. So don't oh. clean your cymbals right before shooting a music video. Good to know. Okay, yep. I think I think the last time I cleaned mine was right before I did like a photo shoot for a, for a photographer here wanting to do drums or something. Okay. But other okay. Than, I can see how I can see how that would affect it, especially if you're in front of a camera. You definitely got crazy amounts of lighting in there, and yeah, but like with a still with still shots, I mean, I think shiny cymbals look good in still shots. For yeah, sure. for sure. Yeah, and you can no like obviously you, no, 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 and you can strategically place lights or get the camera in a place where you're not getting like crazy glare or whatever. That's no problem. But music video, you can't be messing around with that. There's no time. There's no time to deal with that. You gotta just go in with dirty symbols. Well, and I guess it's not still enough for people to really notice it much anyway. What? Like dirty what? symbols. Oh no, no, no. You yeah. know, like the guy's playing already. It's moving. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, yeah, no problem. But no anyway, problem. yeah, man, we've we tackled well, a lot. Yeah, and there's a lot more. We'll have to circle back around and get into some of this stuff a little bit more. But uh, for the moment, though, let's take another quick little break and then come back and uh, we got a couple shout outs. Hey, everyone, this is Travis. And today we're introducing a new segment to the podcast called Drum Trivia. And since we're already talking about symbols... I thought it'd be good to talk about the history of two of the main cymbal companies that a lot of us play, Trazildjian and Sabian. And there's a lot of details that I didn't know as a drummer until I researched this the other night. And I figured a lot of you may not know this already. And it'd be kind of neat to see how those companies came into play and a lot of the similarities between those two companies that you may not know existed. Zildjian was founded in 1623 by... Avidus Zildjian, who was an Armenian alchemist living in Constantinople. Avidus, if you may know, is a series of Zildjian symbols and as well as the Constantinople series. 
So that's where those series get their names. Ovidus being the founder's name, Zildjian being his last name, and Constantinople being the city where he lived. Further down his family line, his descendants Robert Zildjian and Armand Zildjian were brothers. Armand Zildjian carried on the family name in Zildjian symbols. His brother Robert Zildjian is actually the founder of Sabian symbols in 1981. How this came about was he got into a fight with his brother Armand when Armand was named the CEO and the main successor of Ovidus Zildjian. So Robert decided to go and start Sabian symbols in New Brunswick, which is in Canada. Crazy enough, this the name Sabian actually comes from the first two letters of the names of his three children, Sally, Billy, and Andy. So I thought that was a little interesting fact about those two symbol companies that you may not have known. I being a Zildjian player and having friends who are Sabian players, I had no idea that Sabian was actually founded by a Zildjian descendant. So with that, let's get back to talking about symbols. Hey everybody, thank you for sticking this episode out with us. We have reached a milestone in the longest episode yet, and it's been full of stories and information that hopefully you guys can find valuable when talking about symbols, but it's been really neat too with these episodes. Um, we've gotten some of you guys reaching out to us, um, and if you're listening to us and you do have questions or comments or concerns or complaints or anything else like that, you can reach out to us. <laughs> uh, Complaints. You, you can go to drumchats.com <laughs> and we have a, a form you can fill out and send us questions. You can almost you can also reach out to us directly at dave at drumchats.com or myself, Travis, at drumchats.com. And speaking of, we had somebody reach out to us. Uh, who we got? We got Jones McCain sent, some, sent, sent us an email on our website. Uh, Jones says, I love this podcast so much. I actually screamed with excitement when you guys announced it will be a two time a month thing. That's pretty cool. Also, I just wanted to pop in and cue yeah. you in on the pronunciation of Kobus, uh, Kobus's name, which is Kubus Pahiter, roughly. Spelling things phonetically is kind of difficult. <laughs> Looking forward to many more episodes. Isn't that the whole point of phonetically yeah, is supposed which, to make it easier? It is hard to figure out like how to write something phonetically yes, though sometimes, definitely. right? Cuz like you think, oh yeah, it's obviously, you know, phonetically it's this blah blah blah. And then you look at it again and you're like, "Oh wait, I'm not actually sure. I feel yeah, like I could pronounce it multiple ways still." Well, I I yeah, tried reaching out to him tricky. and hopefully I can get in touch with him and maybe we can have yeah, yeah, I tried reaching out Kobus? to him on Instagram. So hopefully he can get back to me and we can just have him pronounce it. So we don't we don't have to worry about phonetics. But anyway, oh, thanks cool. thanks Jones for reaching out. And any of you other guys, you can just head on over to the website and send us whatever questions you want. And Dave, you actually had somebody reach out to you, didn't you? Oh yeah. Um there's one specific that that came to mind that I should mention here. And that was uh the Adam King uh from Cincinnati. And uh and he was talking about about being a drummer and and playing in bands and whatnot and and uh, wanting to play in the studio and um, just trying to get some advice on getting session work or getting hooked up with people um, as a touring drummer, you know? So, yeah. So that's something where you should um, maybe dive into at some point. Um, a lot of it is he did, he asked if it was a lot of about your like portfolio. Uh, maybe you can have something online to, to showcase your work or if it's really just about like who, you know, and that's certainly a huge part of it, you know, um, personal experience with people uh, and word of mouth is like really the most important thing. So like definitely take collaborations and opportunities seriously and don't be a jerk, like just be an all around good person. And uh, you're going to get a lot of people talking about you uh, positively as opposed to uh, the other way around. So. Um, yeah, take that stuff seriously and, and be a good person. Uh, but yeah, if you can figure out some way to showcase your material online and your chops, whether it's a YouTube channel or, you know, just some sort of, uh, 
you know, demo reel of sorts, like playing music on whatever, whether it's like recordings you've been on or live shows or whatever, you know, presentation matters certainly. But if, uh, you know, as much as you can get up there uh, online is is the better. But yeah, definitely knowing people is kind of where it's at. That's, I would say, the number one thing. But we can get into that a little bit more at some point. But yeah, I just wanted to to give uh, Adam King a quick little shout out and say thanks. Uh, Yeah, and you guys can definitely always hit us up on all of our socials as well. So definitely find us drum chats on all the different platforms or us individually, Dave Douglas or... uh, um, Travis, you have, I guess you have all the socials as well. I haven't really looked into all of yours. <laughs> Do I, am I friends with you on everything? I think so. Yeah. Just look for Travis Davis. You can just find him, you know, he's out there. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you can email us directly, Travis at drumchats.com, Dave at drumchats.com, or just head over to the website and fill out the form. You can hit us up on Instagram at drum chats, Facebook at drum chats. Um, Dave, I think your immediate tag is I am Dave Douglas. Right, like you are the only one on the face of the planet. Yeah, and it's yeah, and that's all the socials. I am Dave Douglas. That's all all you need to know. Yeah, and you and and you can find us too from the Drum Chats page if you really want to find our personal files and send us something. You can, um, but yeah, if you've got questions like these, like Adam and Jones did, please reach out to us. If you got experience in ways that we don't know and you want it to be showcased please tell us because we want to hear it so with that being said thanks for tuning in for symbols continued and stay tuned for our next episode which i'll give you a little hint is going to be about snare drums and you'll have to tune in to see what we talk about so with that we will see you guys next time (laughs) 